Donald Trump may believe that pitting Americans against Americans will benefit him. I don't. My grandpa, when I lived with him down in Greenridge, used to talk about everybody. Everybody, Joey, deserves a shot. Donald Trump loved to talk and talk and talk. But after three and a half years of big promises, what do the American people have to show for all the talk? He's fought repeatedly to take health care away from tens of millions of people who didn't have it before. And over 100 million people who were covered because they had pre-existing conditions now that they couldn't have gotten coverage for before. He promised an infrastructure plan. What happened to all of that? He promised to bring back jobs with manufacturing. I'm going to change that. We're going to double the foreign tax, the tax on foreign profits, so we don't encourage people to leave and build abroad. And when it comes to COVID-19, after months of doing nothing other than predicting the virus would disappear, or maybe if you drank bleach, you may be okay, Trump has simply given up. He's waved the white flag. He's walked away, and his failures come with a terrible human cost and deep economic toll. Time and again, working families are paying the price for this administration's incompetence. There's no other way to say it than incompetence. Donald Trump has been almost singularly focused on the stock market, the Dow and NASDAQ. Not you, not your family. You know, you see, growing up rich and looking down on people is a bit different than how I grew up up here. Here, nobody thought and understood. Nobody thought but also knew that Wall Street bankers and CEOs didn't build this country. It was at my grandfather Finnegan's kitchen table in Greenridge that I learned money doesn't determine your worth. He'd say, Joey, no one in the world is more worthy than you, and everyone is equally worthy. My dad used to have an expression. The people who follow me, I'm tired. I know they're probably tired of me saying it, but he meant it, and I never understood it as well as I have the last 15 years. He said, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay, and mean it. I don't know if you say, Joey, you're in labor from belt buckle to shoe sole. Well, I've taken pride in that because the only way my dad would say you can deal with power is with power. In corporate America, and I come from a corporate state of the world, Delaware. The only way to deal with abuse of power is with power. If that's raining outside, come on in, guys. I don't want anybody out there. Are you guys in the rain? Or is that not rain? I thought, okay, I thought that was rain. It is? You guys can come on in. Don't stay out there. Let's help millions of would-be entrepreneurs get out from under their debts so they can start businesses. And it's time corporate America paid their fair share of taxes. It's way past time to put an end to the era of shareholder capitalism. The idea the only responsibility a corporation has is to share <laughs> Let's use this opportunity to take bold investments in American industry and innovation so the future is made in America, all in America. I do not accept the defeatist view that forecasts that automatic automation and globalization mean we can't keep well-paid jobs here in America and create more of them. I do not buy it for one second that the vitality of American manufacturing is a thing of the past. American manufacturing was the functioning arsenal of democracy in World War II. It has to be part of the engine of new prosperity in America now. To buy American products and support American jobs. My plan would tighten the rules 
will purchase clean energy technologies, fight climate change. The Chinese are spending multiple billions of dollars trying to own the technology in the future, while we sit with our thumb in our ear. That means fighting unfair trade practices, curbing the threat of intellectual, intellectual property by countries like China. America can't sit on the sidelines in a race in the future. In addition to bringing back the jobs that have been lost this year, my plan will help create at least 5 million, 5 million new, good-paying jobs as experts have looked at it, in manufacturing, in innovation, and create them right here in the United States of America. Our president wasn't prepared for this pandemic. He ignored the detailed briefings and warning that our administration left behind. The threat of a pandemic, we told him, was coming. He gave, we gave all this to his, his administration in transition, but he shut it all down. He shut down the pandemic office we had inside the White House. He praised the Chinese government even as the virus was coming to our shores because he was so afraid that they'd walk away from his trade deal. We've seen in this pandemic the immense burden on working parents, especially women. They're carrying, they're carrying as if they, uh, you know, they find themselves in a position where they're working, they're attempting to work, attempting to take care of their children who are young, at the same time they're aging parents who need help and are suffering from disabilities. It's been especially hard in this crisis. But let's face it, it's always hard. So let's make it easier to afford child care and care for our aging relatives, our moms and our dads. Let's offer more pay and more economic dignity to millions of workers, women, often women, often women of color, we're entrusted to help teach our youngest and care for our oldest at the same time. Donald Trump has no idea what it's like to be a single parent who's barely getting by and needs to find child care. He doesn't have a clue what it's like to provide for an aging parent. And that's understandable. But it's unconscionable that he doesn't even try to understand or empathize with the struggle of so many millions of people out there. Like a lot of you, and I'll bet there's a lot of you out there in the audience, including the press, you understand it personally. I understand it. I know how hard it is to be a single dad who has to work with two young sons at home. I know what it means to bring your aging parents into your home in the last months of their lives to care for them as well. I've done both, and I had great help. I have a really close family. And I was a U.S. Senator making $42,000 a year at the time. I've done both, it's hard. It's so much harder for millions of Americans who are trying to make ends meet. Let's make everyone sure everyone has access to a good education, regardless of the zip code. Let's triple the amount of money we spend on Title I schools. Those are Title I schools. You have 18 of them. 18 of Title I schools in Scranton and Dunmore. And that means that they're very low tax bases, so they're having trouble keeping teachers. I triple the amount of money we spend on those from 15 billion a year to 45 billion, raising the salaries for the teachers in those schools up to $60,000 a year, making sure every single solitary child, age three, four, and five, is able to go to school, not daycare, Mr. Mayor. All the data shows and studies show, whether it's at the U or it's at the University of Pennsylvania, anywhere around, that that increases by over 58% the chance that that child will go all the way through and graduate. Imagine what a big difference it will make. I think because of this pandemic, everyone has a renewed appreciation of just how hard our teachers work how important their job is. So let's give them the resources and the support they need both to get through this crisis and empower the next generation of American groundbreakers. So let's pay them. These aren't somebody else's children. They're all our children. They're the children. Those children are the kite strings that hold our national ambitions of laws. And our teachers, our teachers are critical. For too long, the battle for racial equality has divided America. It should be used now to unite us. 
Donald Trump cynically claims that he's defending Americans' heritage by embracing the Confederate flag in public monuments of generals who rebelled against and were treasonous against the United States of America. People who tried to permanently rip this nation apart. Do you think Donald Trump has any idea that 360,000 Pennsylvanians fought on the side of the Union to defeat the flag, that Confederate flag, including more black soldiers coming from the state of Pennsylvania than any other state in the nation? Do you think he has any clue that 33,000 Pennsylvanians died in the Civil War fighting against everything that flag stood for? I see different America than Trump. One that, despite all our flaws and shortcomings and failings, is still, after more than two centuries, dedicated to equality, liberty, and human dignity. The challenges we face today are among the biggest in our history. We have to come together in this country to solve them. And I was told you can't unite it. You can't unite America. We're done. I've long said America is at its best when we act as one nation, one America. That's the tragedy of Donald Trump being president today. He's exactly the wrong person to lead at this moment. He'll not bring this country together. He's determined to drive us apart, to keep his base in place. He'll not be president for all the American people, his base. He believes he's elected president only by his base. He's determined to stroke and revive the worst moments from our past. I have no illusion how tough the road ahead is going to be for our country. But I'm an optimist for one reason above all others. I know the history and the heart of this country. And give it a chance, just a chance. Ordinary Americans can and have done extraordinary things. And they'll never, ever, ever let their country down, even half a chance. They won't let it down now. The only thing that can tear America apart, and I mean this sincerely, no foreign country, not the way he coddles up to, I shouldn't even get into this, but coddles up to Putin and others, they can't tear us apart. The only entity, the only thing that can tear America apart is America itself, period. So we just need to remember who we are. This is the United States of America. There's not a single thing, nothing, not a single thing we've ever failed to do when we've decided to do it together. That's what this is about, We're doing it together. We have a great opportunity to build back and build back better. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. That's all, folks.